Excuse me, Mutamorphosis is getting bought out, and we have some very, very strange other buyouts happening as well. Well, make sure you guys smash the and grab out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more on content. As per usual, one of you will be walking away with a booster pack with your comment down below telling me what you guys think about today's market. It's a... Uh, it's a rough life out here. We're still waiting on reveals and everything. I, I assume that leaks are going to start happening here very, very shortly. But we'll cross that bridge as we get there. But today, Mutamorphosis. You know, we talked about this. There was recently a Praying Kids runic list that surfaced that was showcasing some of the power that you could do with Mutamorphosis. And I, I, I quite actually really liked the idea of what you could do with being able to, you know, tribute basically your runic monster and be able to warp into you know, do some praying kid stuff, or, you know, <laughs> just, it, it's it's a cute idea. Your conversion turnover sales here, uh, I mean, 29, 33, 30, 30 as well. I'm, I'm not surprised to see that this is pushing on up here. You have one for 38, you have one abnormality for 28, and then you hit the 44, 46, <laughs> on up to uh, $50 for Mutamorphosis. Your regular version of Mutamorphosis, I mean, this isn't too terrible. 3, 3, 5, the way it looks here. All across the board, I mean, everything feels pretty normal with this. I will say that we're probably going to continue to see uh, push-ups with Mutamorphosis, just because, you know, once again, exploring the ideas that Runic has going for us, and, uh, you know, as a filming list with no ban list out here, you know, people are starting to get very safe out here with their investments. So like, you know, I don't really, I don't really need to spend all of this money on these cards. And it's like, understandable, you know, you can go ahead and safely do whatever you want. And then bam, out comes the ban list. Sure. Hi, Samurai Destroyer. Anybody, anybody notice anything abnormal about this? Maybe the fact that it's a rare level seven synchro monster that uh, never really had a reprint around here. 15 listings? Um, this is all 411, by the way. I am uh, i don't know what to say about this. The fact that this thing hit the 250 mark, I was like, oh. It's got Battles of Monster, your opponent can activate cards or effects till the end of the damage step. Also, the opponent's monster has its effects negated during the battle phase. And if this is if this face of card in zone control leave the field because of the opponent's card effect, drag one monster in your graveyard and special to summon it. Well, that's actually pretty decent. That uh, that literally floats you down into another free monster. It's also 2,600 attack points. I'm going to probably just assume this is some sort of shenanigans with Tempai Dragons, because considering the TCG is looking at every sort of which way sideways, you know, we can play this other method of madness, you know. I, I got I to gotta give it to the TCG. We're really starting to explore some crazy things out here. But I was... Just seeing these wild, random synchros gaining these really oof, expensive price tags is amazing. You know, I'm not all that surprised to see this either. You know, I traded for two of these over the weekend when these were $3, all right? And it's just fairly in the last couple days here, these have hit $5 across. Actually, I just lied. These are $5.25 on up to $5.50. Like, what in the world is happening with this card? Yeah, you, know, you can see over the course of the weekend, eh, it was 281, and so forth. Well, pulling the rugs, once again, I guess we're at the point right now that Edison format, as this format continues to drag on more and more, people are going to continue to look to the alternatives. And to be honest with you, pulling the rug at the current level and price that it is, I'm not all that surprised to see, you know, this price tag starting to push up to these levels. It, I, it was definitely a matter of time, but I don't know. If you haven't got your pulling the rugs for Edison format, uh, whether or not you choose to play them or not, do so sooner than later. Clashing Souls. Well, first of all, this is has 137 listings on it, with it being 14 cents. There's nothing really too crazy to talk about here, but this was on the top of the best selling. And I was like, what in the world's going on? So you have nothing here in the last day or so. And you look back, you see some pretty impressive listings. And then you see this train wreck right here. You have 400 copies being sold of this card back on April 1st. I, I'm assuming that this is just somebody read this card and was like, hey, you know, like this is kind of a, a cool little option tree here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pick this up. But, 
buying in bulk, I guess, is one of the those things that people look at. And they're like, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to pick up as many Clashing Souls as I can get. Why? But, sure. Interesting. Simul Archfiends from Darkwing Blast. Hmm, another... Another super rare here. 242 listings. Oh, that that can't be too crazy, right? Um, somebody bought, I kid you not, 1,388 copies of this at 0.14 cents. They spent $200 to wipe that listing off of the market, but they now have 1,300 listings of it um, at their disposal. Once again, you have another card here that is the penny stonk department. I don't think that this is going to adjust too much, but if people are willing to invest and spend this much money out here in this these common cards that might not necessarily feel like to us that they have the greatest value, people want their tech choices. And that, that's perfectly understandable, but man, that's $200 effectively to wipe out 1,300 of those off of the market. That's crazy to think about. Hey, you guys remember Brave Eyes Pendulum Dragon, right? Yeah, we've had our fair share of uh, fun with this guy. 15 listings at the moment. Putting the card at 15, well, actually 16, 15, 13. Yeah, this thing has been turning over for a little while. Once again, this is the thing that you definitely are doing with the Zark plays. The fact that, you know, like, oh, you know, hey, we can bring this off of the Supreme King trap card and split our Zark apart. I mean, yeah, sure. Has uh, literally Pendulum Dragon in the name. It's everything that you want to see here. Um, for an old Seeker Air, yeah. It actually amazes me for whatever reason this card has dodged getting, you know, some sort of reprint. I do fully expect somewhere along the way that we'll see some sort of value drop out for this card, or at least Konami try to do something with this. But for now, whew, that's a that's an expensive Supreme King card to mess around with. Oh man, are you $136? for a Japanese, or for a damaged copy of this? You've gotta be kidding me. This card has accelerated, somebody paid 125 for a Trident Dragon. What in the actual crap? You can get an EU English for 146, and it's 160 for English Near Mint. What? I didn't think that this card could go even further beyond, but it has $75 for an ultra rare. That is absolutely mind-blowing. And a t the secret rare version of this, 6145, wow. You can tell that people really want to play Tenpai Dragon out here. Like, I'm genuinely, this is crazy to see this much value being pressed around on a card. And I didn't think Trident Dragon could shatter any more numbers. Man, I was wrong. Um, there was a debate this week that was brought up to my attention. Somebody's like, oh, Dimension Guardian is better than, you know, the Grandala spell card. And I'm like, no, I don't really think so. Um, I Look at this. Like, 72 listings of this, nothing's really sold for this. But you're telling me that this card is better than this card. No. No, not even a comparison. This is infinitely better. If for whatever reason you're trying to play stun out here and you're like, oh, I'm going to... We're going to play Dimension Guardian, you know, over, you know, Gondala. What are you doing? Like, this card, stop it, all right? This card is cheaper, and it is better, 100%. And uh, Bujinte, Kagetsuchi here. I feel like I've been under a rock for the last week or so with this card, but uh, back on, oh, wow, last couple days here, he had a little bit of strange movements. It's not like this card moves every single day in a, a crazy fashion. But it's enough that you, you look at this thing and you're like, well, you know, it is literally two level four Beast Warriors and it does send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard. So you can have some sort of built-in, you know, tier support with this. If you can, you know, find a way to incorporate, you know, that vast large amount of wanting to play Beast Warriors in your tier deck. But once again, people do kind of try to hold on to whatever amount of hope that I think that they can try to have and being like, Ooh, you know, we can play, we can play Boojins now. And it's like, it's not really going to pay out all that much. Like, this is just, you're trying to do too much, I feel like, and you have better options. But 
I guess the gimmick is always going to be there for people. Well, that's all we have for Market Watch today. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And as per usual, one of you be walking away with a booster pack. You guys have a good rest of your day. All right. Peace out. Patrons. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.